Orbital weather satellites. Guys, if you're a prepper, this is a must. Gives you satellite data when there's no internet, no cars, no, no light, no movie cars, whatever they say on Gilligan's Island. When there's none of that, uh, you could still actually have orbital weather satellite data coming into your shack on something as simple as a Raspberry Pi or a phone or something. I don't know exactly how or well you would do it, but it can be done. Um, I know for uh, the computer, it's pretty simple, and we're going to be going through that process here tonight. Um, Joseph, do you want to say anything as we're getting started with this segment? Um, yeah, uh, it may seem complicated at first because a lot of this is done in software. There's not a whole lot of hardware set up. Most of it is software. And these, uh, you know, this program here that we're going to be showing today, uh, it's not the most obvious of how to use it when you first get it some of the menu options are a little bit cryptic and it's you know your general open source kind of uh experience but um once you know where the menu options are and everything it's actually incredibly simple to set up and you know all you need is an antenna and the software running on the computer and it's it's very easy to set up so it may look very complicated at first but once you you know get the the um Oh, what's the word for it? Whenever you've got language that's used for something that most people don't know, the lingo. Once you understand the lingo, um, it's actually pretty easy to to figure out and use. So don't feel too intimidated looking at all this stuff that's about to come. Now, remember, there's two kinds of satellites. and We're going to be talking about geosynchronous satellites next week because we can actually receive images from those as well. Those come in nice and clear. They encompass more of the Earth and they're received on a higher bandwidth. Um, this one here, what we're talking about now, is received on two meter band, and these are what they call polar orbiting satellites, and the orbit brings them over our section every so often, and there's a number of them. So just about every couple of hours, there's one going overhead, and you could be getting live data. We're actually looking right now at putting up an antenna at one of our shacks and actually publishing this data live onto the internet. Uh, there's actually a back end in the program built in to do that. So uh, kind of some really cool stuff. Um, basically, these this is an example of what you get. There's two kinds of satellites. There's one, uh, there's uh, a number of them that put out the lower resolution pictures. And Joseph, I, correct me if I'm wrong, there's one right now that's putting out the higher resolution pictures. Yes, so there's two different types of satellite. One is a European satellite, and then the others we'll be talking about today are the uh, NOAA satellites. The European satellites actually put out um, color images, and they're a little bit higher, maybe a little bit higher resolution. Uh, receiving them is exactly the same. You just put in their frequency. The software doesn't need any just special configuration for it. It's just exactly the same as you would for uh, the NOAA satellites, but they're on a little bit different frequency, so... Um, yeah, the ones we get here, the, the ones made for the, from the United States, those are in black and white. Um, of course, the satellites orbit, though, so you can get either one whenever you want. So, yeah. So there you go. There's a bunch of different satellites going over, and as they're going over, uh, they're constantly sending data. So all you have to do is just basically capture it. All right, so what are you going to need to capture the satellite data uh, as it goes over? Well, you're going to need a radio. Uh, and it's going to need to be set up so that it pipes audio into your computer. That uh, seems to be a hurdle to get over, but it really isn't. Because remember, we can use an, S, an STL, uh, an RTL-SDR, a software-defined radio. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. Um, and uh, you're going to need an app called WX2IMG, or weather, weather to Image. Uh, and you're going to need that app downloaded into your computer. You're going to need uh, a way to record it. If you're using the app, you can do it live with the app, or you can record the pass and then play it back into the program, just like I told you you could do with SSTV. It's kind of the same thing. Um, here's the bugger. You know, with everything we do, if it involves the government, what does that mean? There's a bugger. Okay, and I hate to say that, but it's true. Here's the bugger. There's always something, right? Here it is. One thing, the one thing, the whole thing that screws this up. 
and we're going to get around it tonight. I'm going to show you how to get around it. What we're doing is 100% legal, by the way. Uh, it's 100% legal to receive any images or anything that's sent out over open frequencies. We all know that. Uh, a linear or right-hand circular polarized antenna is required. Now, will you get something without it? Yes. Will it be usable? Doubt it. I picked up some images. They were really bad. <laughs> I, used, I used my 35 foot vertical and they were just bad. Um, and the weird thing is a vertical antenna actually picks up more when it's closer to the horizon and then it kind of fades out overhead and it's kind of weird. You get it. It's a weird thing. Um, you need a specific antenna for this. Uh, you can still play around with it. You can still get some images and do some stuff, but you really need a specific antenna for this. Now, there's four different kinds, and we're going to show you some different options for that here in just a minute. Yeah, you're probably asking, well, why can't I just use a scanner for this? You really don't want to use a scanner for this. I'm not going to go into all the crap. Scanners do not have a wide bandwidth. You want to be able to widen that out, and you can do that with a radio or an SDR, but you can't do it with a scanner. So scanners are not recommended. They will still pick up something, but they're not recommended, and you'll never get a clear signal with a scanner. All right, so the standard radio setup. How are we going to do this? Well, the easiest way to do this, because we don't want to tie up our uh, one of our rigs, right? Anytime I'm setting anything up now, I'm trying to do it without tying up one of my main rigs. So we're going to do this by setting up different some different things. But first... We're going to go through how you would set it up to your rig. So let's say we're going to set it up to a rig. You would just go into the back of your rig and Joseph pipe in here anytime you want. Literally interrupt me. Okay. All um, right. Find your radio's auxiliary audio port. That's where you would plug your speaker in the back or your headphone or whatever. Uh, and then you just plug it right into there. And uh, some radios, you have to change a menu setting to, uh, to send audio out this port. Most of them you do not. Um, then you want to plug the other end of that into your line in. You can use mic in. I suggest against it. I would use line in if you have it because line in is going to be about the right feed uh, strength for that plug. If you use a mic, uh, a mic is it's going to be really hot coming in for a mic. And so you'd have to turn the radio almost down to nothing I find there's better results if you find a line in and use line in versus mic in. Plug it into your computer. Um, it's uh, the it's fully automated software. Um, it uses the audio signal from your radio to listen to tones generated by the weather satellite. Okay, and then that program WX to IMG that we talked about supports real time decoding. And then it also, once it decodes the map, it like puts a colored map behind it. So it basically takes those cloud image that it just downloaded and puts it over a map. Um, and it also has GPS interfacing, a wide area composite image creation and computer control of many weather satellite receivers, communication receivers and scanners. It's completely automated recording, decoding and web page production publishing. That's what I told you about. It'll literally publish the pictures you get right to a website. And there's a quick start guide on the download website. Joseph? Yeah. The, um, if you go looking for wx 2 img online, you may uh, hear somewhere that the program was discontinued. But somebody uh, actually took up the project again. And so now the, uh, that's why the website says it's the restored version because the uh, makers of the software abandoned it a while back. But it has been taken over and is now still being maintained. So that's um, pretty good that somebody did that, and uh, it works really well. I've used it some, so um, yeah, there's a link in here to get it, and uh, yeah, here we go. Um, as you can see, it says restored, so yeah, if you see that it says the project is canceled, then you're in the wrong area because um, it is still here. Right, and they literally like mirrored the page and put it back up again on a different server, so that's why you may get one link that says it's discontinued, look again because there's another link there where you'll you'll find it and that's you can just type that in there if you want wxtoimg restored dot xyz all right 
Do you want to go through these? Um, well, one second. Did we, um, oh, the VB audio cable thing is out of order. That's not good. Um, okay. I can Hold on. This is for line it. Yeah. Okay. Back, this is but... correct. This is correct. This is correct. All right. So when you have WX to IMG installed on your computer, you do actually need to tell it where to listen to the, uh, the audio stream. So if you've got your radio, you know, connected over a, an auxiliary plug into the back of your computer for the line in, you'll uh, you'll need to go into WX to IMG and tell it to listen to that audio device. So if you go into WX to IMG, the options tab is up the top. Uh, as you can see there in the little picture, I've got a green box around it. And you go to recording options. Uh, they, they could have chosen a better name, but it's recording options. Uh, in here, you'll see in the middle, it says common recording options and it says sound card. Uh, you don't have to mess with sample rate or antenna type or really anything, not even receiver port, uh, unless you're using a special satellite receiver. But you just want to click on sound card and you want to make it say line in if you're using uh, the line in. Or it can say microphone uh, if you're using the microphone device. But more often than not, you'll just make it say uh, line in. Go to the next slide. Yeah, here we go. It says line in. You'll have a bunch of different options there, but you know, line line in is what you want or microphone. So then you hit OK once you're done. Uh, and that's your audio device set up. So now the uh, software at this point should be ready to just sort of sit by. There's um, a menu option. If you go to file, there's an option there that says test. You can actually test uh, your device by playing. Say you get a file online that's got the uh, sounds that it would play. You can test it to make sure you're working. So um, at that point, once you've got your audio device set up, you're you're pretty much ready to go. Uh, the software is automated. You can put in your uh, station coordinates, and it will automatically start decoding as the satellite comes into range. So you know if you leave this running overnight, it won't generate a massive picture of static. It'll only start recording once the satellite should be in range for your uh, signal. Of course, there's a lot of variables that go into that. You know, if you have a different kind of antenna or your station coordinates are off, you can you know, the, the buildings in your area and stuff. So you could tweak those settings and um, figure it out. But you might just want to leave your radio squelch open completely overnight. And in the morning, if all went correctly, you might have an image. It probably won't be very good unless you've built a special antenna. But uh, I've done it before where I've let it run overnight. And in the morning, I had an, an albeit very poor, but I had a picture. So uh, once you've got the audio set up, it's actually, it's it's pretty straightforward from there. All right, so now we're going to talk about the software defined radio. Um, again, this is twenty seven dollars on Amazon. Um, the uh, I just literally I checked today; it's twenty seven dollars on Amazon. Um, it's uh, I think most everybody pretty much knows what this is, but it's basically an entire radio receiver in a dongle. You plug it into your. Uh, uh, your computer has a little SMA plug there that you adapt into your antenna. Now, here's what people don't realize. You've got this big antenna or maybe this long wire that you're using for HF or maybe this big beam that you're using for six meters. Any of that can be hooked up to this and used with this. Um, that's what I, you, you can make. This thing can receive just as well as your radio in most cases. And it's very customizable as to how wide the bandwidth is and things like that. Uh, so, Joseph, what what else? Do, what, what am I missing? Yeah, so these dongles are, I think every ham should have one of these because you can listen to anything from around uh, 25 megahertz up to 1.7 gigahertz uh, with the standard settings on one of these dongles, which covers emergency services, all the amateur bands, uh, you know, VHF amateur bands. Um, anything you could possibly want to listen to it's you can do any demodulation mode you want so single sideband you know if you want to listen to single sideband on 800 megahertz you can uh, you can have any demodulation mode uh, you can use you can adjust the filter width so for example you know with our NOAA satellites they have kind of a wide signal you know so you can actually adjust the uh, the filter width right there in the software to make sure you've got yeah see the little gif there you've got uh, the signal selected in the little receiver so you don't have too much extra noise and you only have signal so you can adjust the uh, filter width um these can also be modified to uh, go down to hf bands just with a simple software setting 
the sensitivity isn't as good as your you know purpose-built hf rig on on the hf bands but it will work so uh, these dongles are very versatile they do not transmit they can only receive um but i, I think everybody should have one of these because they are really good and they are fantastic for satellite stuff yeah and if you like your sdr uh you like anything else in the world you can buy a better one for 50 dollars and a great one for a hundred dollars and for 150 bucks, you can buy one that will actually transmit uh, 500 milliwatts. And then from there, you could plug that into a uh, kicker of some kind and you could be right where, you, you know, you could literally use it as a two-way radio. So SDRs go all the way up. We're talking basically about the one at the very bottom, which will still receive just about everything you would ever want to receive. All right, here's this fun program that I installed in my computer this week. Go ahead, Joseph. All right, so virtual audio cable is another thing that I think every amateur radio operator should have on his, uh, you know, his his radio computer that he uses. Virtual audio cable is a program that pipes audio from one application to another. So you know how earlier we were selecting the uh, line in audio device for getting audio from your radio. Well, this creates a virtual device. So in one application, you would select the virtual cable as its output. And in the other program, you would select the virtual cable as its input. So now, instead of the audio playing through your speakers, it is actually going to go straight into the other program for demodulation or, uh, in this case, weather satellite data download. And a lot of these projects involving any kind of digital mode, uh, if you want to use a software-defined radio, um, you'll have your, your application, which controls the software-defined radio, and then you'll have your, you know, like FL Digi, for example or MMS STV. So with virtual cable, you pipe that audio out of the demodulator software and straight into your SSTV or your FL Digi program. So this cable, uh, I use it almost every day. It's so versatile, I use it for everything. Um, but it's VB audio cable or uh, virtual audio cable and it is free and it is very easy to install. It's like one click once you download it. So um, yeah, you, you use it to send audio from program to program. It's very easy to use, and it's it, you. You do need to use it if you're using a uh, software-defined radio for this project. Yeah, because you know, with, with these radios, we or with our computers, we always have a problem with line in. We always have a problem with getting the audio. We want to get an audio from this source to this source. It's always a problem in Windows. With this, it fixes that problem. The, it gives you one of these for free. If you want the other four, you have to pay for them. There's a nominal fee. Um, but uh, the first one, it, you get the first one for free. And basically what you do is you set the SDR to send its signal on that K on, on the virtual cable. And then you just, you set your MMST or your, whatever you're receiving, whatever you want to receive with it on uh, the other end of that same virtual cable. And now they're connected together. The way this could be really cool. Let's say you had a supercomputer. Okay. Uh, like Joseph has. Uh, let's say you could you could literally run FT8 on this screen with that radio and you could run an SDR receiving satellite data on this screen. And over here, you could have another SDR receiving M MMS STV images on this screen and have yet another audio cable here on a Zoom meeting with us. And use three audio virtual audio cables and then use the actual sound card for the Zoom meeting. You see what I'm saying? I mean, you, you can you can do all this stuff by just connecting sound cards, either virtual ones like the one he's talking about here, where it connects your SDR sharp to your device or by buying these little eight dollar ones that I'm buying uh, and connecting those up. And those give you the audio source where you can bring in multiple radios into the same computer. So there's so much you can do with this by just figuring out how to get all the audio streams you want to come in and go into just the programs that you want them to go into. And, and trust me, it can sometimes be the most daunting task. Um, all right, any more questions on the VB audio cable? Okay, and this, just to make it clear, that's it's like a virtual cable that connects things within your computer. And there's the uh, website where you can get VB audio cable. And uh, it's just bb-audio.com forward slash cable last call for questions on vb audio cable all right joseph 
All right, so uh, if you're going to be getting satellite data or anything, you know, where you need to pipe audio, uh, in your application that you're using as your demodulator, uh, in this case, it's SDR Sharp, uh, which is the most popular uh, demodulator program, you'll go to your audio menu and you'll go to your output and you'll just select the uh, cable input. It is a bit confusing with all these inputs and outputs, but you want to tell, tell your application to output to the input a virtual audio cable. Um, if we go to the next slide, on the next one, you'll just, in your uh, application where you want to receive the audio, you'll select the cable output as the input. So, you know, there's only going to be two entries there most of the time, so it isn't that confusing if you're just, you know, wanting to pipe it. You just look for the entry that says cable and select that. So it is fairly simple, but um, yeah, yours once you have it installed. Yeah, you probably won't have 23 devices like this guy's. <laughs> It'll probably have like three or four. Yeah, it's yeah. got a lot of stuff. Yeah, so it's really easy to use. That's how you pipe audio back and forth between applications, and uh, it's a very good skill to have because a lot of these projects uh, require that. So once you've got your audio flowing from one to the other, uh, you use your demodulator program. Uh, in this picture, it's SDR Sharp, which is the, the easiest to use and the most popular one. And yeah, then can, you'll just tune just, it. I don't mean to interrupt you, but just to put it out sure. there real quick, take a look at this screen, guys. This is SDR Sharp. Notice at the bottom, as you're scanning up and down every single frequency known to man, it actually tells you on the bottom what band you're in, whose band it is. And uh, I, I've always thought that was really cool about SDR Sharp. I know there's other programs that do something similar, but I like the fact that, okay, I'm scanning through here at 138. Oh, I'm an air band. It even, I think, comes set to automatically change to am when it gets in the air band and yes it, it changes does to ssb yes. when it gets into whatever it'll actually unless you override it it will change into the band that's set for the or the the mode for that band basically okay go ahead i just yep. wanted to mention that sdr sharp is an amazing thing I, we really should have made a slide for it i i, yeah. <laughs> I feel kind of dumb we didn't make a slide for it well you can um, see but... it here yeah, I don't have it hooked up or I would turn it on right now. I don't have one here, but, uh, uh, but yeah. Um, yeah, SDR sharp. It's uh, SDR with a little pound symbol, but it's pronounced SDR sharp. I'm not sure why that is, but here you can see in this little GIF, this is what the actual signal coming from the NOAA satellite will look like on your waterfall. Uh, it's an APT signal. So we actually, uh, in the last TechNet, we played a, a sound clip of what it sounds like. Um, that's your APT signal coming from the satellite. So if you can see it, if you see those vertical lines, that means you've got a signal. So the stronger the lines are and the more of them there are, the stronger your signal is. Uh, and so if you see those, that means you've got your uh, satellite locked in and you can go over to WX to IMG and start waiting for a picture, providing everything is uh, set up correctly. And again, you can sit there all night and wait for a satellite, or you can go to the tracking site and see when the next one's coming over and, uh, you know, an ADD like I do. Oh, here's my favorite and least favorite part of this discussion tonight. Okay, here we go. Uh, guys, you have to have a special antenna to get really clear images. The government uses a, uh, a horizontally or it's a uh, what circular right hand circular polarization. Yeah, right hand circular polarization. It sounds more like a building tool. Um, but yeah, you've got to have an antenna that's, that's got the right bastard circulation polarization thingy, or it doesn't get you good, clear images. That's the bottom line. Here's your options. You've got uh, an inverted V dipole. It's built uh, specifically for picking up the satellite and it's built in a very specific way. It's uh, probably the easiest to make, but it also has the lowest performance. The uh, um, the helix is probably the toughest to build, um, but they're very omnidirectional, and you'll get the signal right as it comes above the horizon. That's what's great about the uh, the helix. Um, I'm probably going to build one of those out of copper pipe. I think uh, you actually buy copper flex pipe, and uh, yeah, I'm. I think I'm. They're build very one. touchy, though. They they're very difficult to build so i know if you go trying to build one of those expect disappointment the first couple of times because they are not easy because look at that I you gotta <laughs> you gotta bend it in a circle yeah, as it going know, up it's very after weird. wind link 
after Winlink and HF phone, I don't know if I can take another disappointment. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I really want to build that. But I will tell you the double cross is supposed to do pretty good, almost as good performance, um, but it's supposed to be a lot easier to build. So, yeah, you just basically have four dipoles uh, tuned for the you know the one three seven megahertz. You got four dipoles rotated uh, at ninety degrees, and then you turn it at uh, I think it's what like that's probably also ninety degrees. So you get four of them, you tilt them like that, um, and I guess that produces the circular polarization that you need. It's also omnidirectional, so those the, the helix and the double cross uh, have very similar performance. So if you want good performance, but you don't want to bother with the Helix, I'd recommend you go with the double cross because it's much simpler to build. Yeah, and the double cross would probably be something you could you could uh, package away and take out if you needed it to, like for a prepper situation. That almost looks like something I could take apart and stick it all down in that in that pipe and put a cap on the end of it and put it under the house, yeah. you know what I mean? And uh, And just have it ready. Um, and, and it basically it's four dipoles and then you just have to turn them all on the right angle. All right. So there you go, guys. That's the one problem with this is that you got to have the right antenna. And of course you'll cut everything to work at 137 megahertz. Okay. I'll, I'll give you this one. Go. All right, so uh, you know you can get these signals if you've built the antenna. You can get these signals just fine with uh, just your radio and the antenna. But if you want the best picture quality and you want you know to get it right as it comes up over the horizon, and you want to maintain a strong signal. You know you want you want to get as much juice out of it as you possibly can. Then you'll probably want to get a uh, a Newelec Sobered Plus LNA. So what this actually has is it's got a filter in it that stops everything except for the 137 megahertz uh, area of satellite information. It blocks everything except for that. So that's going to help with nearby FM radio stations because those could be a really big problem if there's one close near you. Um, those will help with that. Those will help with air band, which is really close. Sometimes if a plane flies overhead, it'll completely wipe out your SDR because it'll, it'll overload your SDR because it's high power, a very similar frequency. So uh, these Sawbird filters, they run about $35 to $40 on Amazon, and they've got a low-noise amplifier in them as well. So not only will it filter out everything and give you just what you want, it will actually amplify it. And um, I haven't used the NOAA one, but I have used one for a different band, and I can tell you that they do work quite well. They're very nice little devices, uh, very well-built, high-quality. You can get them in a little metal enclosure too. The one in the picture here is the one I have, which is... Um, just in the, the bare uh, PCB with the filter on it, but you can get them in a little enclosure. They can be powered off the bias T of the software defined radio. So it will actually put out some voltage on the antenna line and then the, uh, the LNA will be, get powered off of that. Alternatively, you can plug in a micro, S micro USB port or just two little uh, battery leads into the board and it will power three different ways. So. Um, these devices are great. I highly recommend them if you've got, you know, a permanent setup and you just want to make sure you've always got the best signal. These things are fantastic. And in testing, they completely filtered out my wife's voice. <laughs> okay. Uh, these are your frequencies, uh, for the, uh, satellites. There's, uh, the four main ones here. Um, and because it's the government, we don't start with number one. Uh, but anyway, uh, 12, 15, 19, 17, those are your, your four main satellites, and those are the corresponding frequencies. NOAA 19 is probably the one you want to use for this area. Um, the others will pass overhead as well, so I guess actually it doesn't make a lot of sense if they're orbital satellites. But um, I always do NOAA 19, 137.100 megahertz. Um, that's the one I've always done, and it gives really nice pictures of um, Florida. is usually centered in the – well, here's the thing. Whichever area the satellite's over, that's what you get a picture of. So if it's over Florida, you're going to get a picture of Florida. So you can really use any one of these. Um, there are other satellites. Uh, the problem is they get turned off after a while. So, you know, NOAA 11, for example, or NOAA 16, uh, that's been deactivated, and it no longer sends out images anymore. So – there's, you know, there's a few that are on and a few that are off, uh, but NOAA 19 is the one I usually use. I haven't tried the other three, um, but for my limited testing that I've done, NOAA 19 seems to be just the one I'd recommend trying to go for at 137.100 megahertz. 
and these are considered old technology. So um, very much so. Yeah. Some of these are reaching end of life at this point. Um, but the, uh, the, the neat thing is with your SDR sharp, um, if you get, if you get a little crafty with the programming, I believe you can get your SDR sharp to receive all four of these frequencies at the same time with a windows, uh, computer. Yeah, you could actually, I think. Yeah. And so I think there's a real good chance you could actually have your system receiving all four frequencies at the same time. Um, the only problem would be is if you had two making a pass at the same time, they would completely blow each other up. So you would get, you would get nothing but crap, but that, but, but what are the odds, right? I think you'd be better off doing it. You're, you're going to get more because you're going to get four satellites, even if every now and then you do get a, a mix match. But anyway, uh, so there you go for best results. Um, Doppler shift, I believe the program compensates for that. It's nothing you really need to worry about. Uh, but the the antenna is essential. Uh, so if you want to do this with any kind of clarity at all, or if you're doing it in a prepper situation, you want to build an antenna and test it. And then you want to store that antenna away where it's safe or deploy it so that it's being used. However, you're going to do it. Uh, you want to use a program. You can use programs to tell you that will even alert you if you want to when they're going to fly over your house. And, of course, you've got to use the right-hand circular uh, circle jerk antenna, whatever they call it. All right. That gets us. That's to the end of that. Does anybody have anything else on um, software-defined radios or on receiving satellite images and telemetry from NOAA satellites? 